Let's design a filtration schedule for a variable speed pump for a 30 foot diameter round pool. So the first thing that we need to know is the volume of the pool. This one we're going to work with is 21,195 gallons. And the reason that we know this is 3.14 pi times r squared, 15 times 15, times the average depth in feet, in this case 4 feet, times 7.5, which is a multiplier for converting uh, cubed feet into gallons, 21,195 gallons for this 30 foot round pool. Now, the thing that we need to talk about is filtration goal. Well, how much are you supposed to filter your swimming pool water? You're supposed to filter all of your water every day. So the goal that we're going here for is 95% of all of the water filtered at least one time. Because if you stop and think about this, it's actually not straightforward at all. The volume is 21,195 and we can pump that much for sure. But did you get all of the water in the pool or did some of the water get filtered twice and some of it hasn't been filtered yet? And that's the reality here is there's a mathematical calculation behind how much you need to filter your water. And the answer is, in order to filter at least 95% of all of your water, you need to turn over the volume of your pool three times every day. If you turn over the water three times, that results in 95% of all of the water being filtered at least one time. The reason why this is important is everything you don't filter from the water you need to chemically treat. Pool owners almost unanimously want less exposure to chemicals, less exposure to chlorine. The first way that you make that happen is you filter your water properly. And what does properly mean? Well, it means you filter all of your water every day or as close as you can get to that goal. In this case, 63,585 gallons is our goal. So here's some of the parameters we're working with on this pool. One and a half horsepower pump, two inch plumbing size. The pump is installed at 120 volts and the TDH is relatively low at about 25 feet. So what we're gonna be doing here is looking at periods of time where the pump is at low speed, periods of time where the pump is at medium speed and periods of time where the pump is at high speed. How much and exactly what RPM you set for these values will be unique to your pool. I can only give you examples here and explain that every swimming pool is different, but I've designed one here. Here's some of the considerations that you might be needing to know about. You know, well, what if I had a salt system? Well, you need typically 15 to 20 gallons per minute minimum for a salt system to turn on. Similarly, for a gas heater, you need 25 to 30 gallons per minimum or gallons per minute minute minimum maybe even a bit more than that for a big heater and that's the idea here is that you kind of customize this schedule of the length of time and the rpm with the parameters and peripheral devices that your pool has again every swimming pool being different there's no way to give you just one number for this but explain that this is a dynamic equation that being said I want to give you some real world numbers and that's what we've got here. So the first thing we're going to do with this variable speed pump is run it for long periods of time at a low RPM. That's very, very important with variable speed pumps. It used to be with single speed pumps, turn off the pump for X many hours per day and that's how you save money. That is not how you save money with a variable speed pump. The way you save money is long periods of time at a very low RPM. Because what you'll see here is you actually move quite a bit of water. Let's take a look at this system now. We have a two inch suction, two inch return on this system. There's the two inch suction line there. One and a half horsepower variable speed pump, 150 square foot cartridge filter. We're monitoring the flow rate today through this two inch line. This analog flow meter, which has been adapted with this digital readout here, very convenient. So right away you can see we're at 1200 RPM already on this pump. It's a pretty low RPM, it's pretty quiet. You know, it's not using a lot of power, but look at this, it's still moving 32 gallons per minute. 
that's actually quite a bit of water that it's moving. And when you look up at the power consumption here, 175 watts, 176 watts of power. That's very little, you know, comparable to a large light bulb kind of thing. But when you come back down here and realize, you know, 32 gallons per minute, 176 watts, but after 12 hours time, you're able to get over 23,000 gallons of filtered water. And again, you're doing so for a very small amount of power. Now, swimming pools are more dynamic than this. We can't just set the, the RPM low and leave it there 24 hours a day. It really needs periods at medium and high speeds as well. So let's take a look at this eight hours at 1750. We should be able to get about 45 gallons per minute. There we go. So 45 gallons per minute. And again, not all that much power consumption. Just a little bit over 370 watts, 373. And over the course of eight hours at 45 gallons per minute, that's going to net us another 21,600 gallons of filtered water. But we also need a period of time at the higher speeds. Maybe not the highest speed because there's an advantage in dialing back just a little bit from the very maximum RPM. You'll only drop a few GPM, but you will drop a fair portion of power consumption. And so that's why you see this number at 2800 RPM and not 3000 or 3450. So in this example, we're going to have our high periods of time, four hours at 2800 RPM. We should be able to get about 78 gallons per minute. Let's take a look at our filter pressure here. I'm going to call that about 6 PSI. Seventy-eight gallons per minute. It's quite a bit. But it's costing us a lot of power consumption here. Over 1300 watts. 1.3 kilowatts. Let's talk about the power consumption and the cost here. So take a look first at 176 watts times 12 hours. That's just over 2000 watts. 373 times eight hours is 2984. And then 1300 watts times four hours is 5200. So our grand total here is 10,296 watts or rounded up 10.3 kilowatts of power consumption. Looking at these numbers here, you can see that the low speed operation for 12 hours only consumed 2100 watts of power. The four hours at high speed consumed 5200. That's actually quite a discrepancy, less than half the amount of power consumed over 12 year hour period of time versus a much higher amount of power consumed in only four hours. It's also significant because in the low speed operation we filtered 23,000 gallons of water at high speed only 18,000. 18,000 gallons for 5200 watts of power consumption or 23,000 gallons for 2000 watts of power consumption and that's why with a variable speed pump the goal is to not turn it off you want to run it all of the time 24 hours a day with a lot of those hours being at low rpm operation where you get quite a bit of filtered water 
for not all that much power consumption. Back to our calculation here, 10.3 kilowatts of power consumption. So let's look at the total cost for this filtration schedule. 10.3 kilowatts times the national average, 13 cents per kilowatt hour. You could also substitute your own number here if you can look at your electricity bill and know what you pay per kilowatt hour. But the national average is 13 cents. 10.3 kilowatts at 13 cents is $1.34 per day, or just over $40 for a month of operation. And again, that's for three times, sorry, down here, three times the volume of this swimming pool being filtered every 24 hours. If you found this information helpful, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can check out my website, swimmingpoolsteve.com.